Today we're talking about Red Norvo's I Got Rhythm, the first chorus that he takes on a 1936 Decca recording. Who's Red Norvo? Oh no! You should check this guy out. He was a great, great, great xylophonist and then he went on to um, play the, xy the vibra harp vibraphone. Um, and I think officially it's something like 1943 we stopped seeing him play the xylophone all the time. But from the recordings from the, from, you know, 1931 to, there's a good 10 years there, um, 31 to the early 40s, he's playing xylophone all the time and there's no shortage of recordings that we can uh, hear, but you can't see him. If you have a video of Red Norvo, please get in touch. <laughs> but I figured I'd make this um, for the people who are more visually stimulated. <laughs> seeing the mallets move around and to talk about um, some things that I would like to talk about uh, namely that he played swing xylophone he started off with this uh, vaudeville career that we don't really have any recordings of his first you know, hole in the wall and uh, what is it knocking on wood we're in that style but even then that's more uh, bridging out of the ragtime style but into swing um but it, it's definitely that sort of showy xylophone thing um and then um he really spent most of his career as a xylophone is playing swing music um into playing with bebop musicians and even that vocabulary not to the degree that we know milt jackson as a um, bebop musician but he definitely had his own voice and was an innovator like no other on the xylophone. So uh, I find myself talking and listening, talking about Red Norvo with people a lot, and I just assume they <laughs> spend a lot of time listening to him, but there's no way that could be true. So I make a terrible assumption. But here we go, shedding some light on uh, Red Norvo and his xylophone playing. One of the most obvious things that you don't even need to know about the jazz music to know about Red Norvo's sound is that he did not beat the xylophone. We have this idea, um, even Gary Burton published, uh, that people used to play, Red Norvo used to play uh, with hard mallets. Uh, you can hear him play with hard mallets, but um, if you listen to this I Got Rhythm Decca recording, I'll put a link, maybe I'll, I'll get fancy and annotate it right here. Thanks, Pete. Uh, <laughs> let's see if I can do that. Uh, you can listen to that recording where it sounds like he's using a softer stick and it's a, and it's a sextet, it's a small ensemble. There are drums, you can barely hear them on the record. Um, and you really hear the, the guitar keeping the rhythm. Uh, and we can know from seeing him play a vibraphone and a lot of people <laughs> who are alive <laughs> knew Red and, got, and saw him play would know that he didn't smack uh, very high from the instrument, but even here I'm playing in my kitchen and I'm playing as low as I can go and I'm out playing my um, laptop speakers. That doesn't take much, but uh, a soft short stick, he barely moves his hands above the keyboard. Um, and uh, very right hand dominant player. George Hamilton Green was left handed. Um, you get all these left hand kind of figures. You know, in Red Norvo's music is like uh in his playing it's almost like that middle school you know where you don't ever use your, those you know you know what i'm talking about <laughs> there's not um alternation sort of uh built in but he uses it when it's necessary but i think i'm from i'm guessing on the stickings here there's pretty right hand to dominant right hand leading uh if there's i would i'm left-handed i would use my left but Dum, bum, bum. Um, the right hand dominance there. The swing music having a propelling quarter note. Um, and uh, so that's there. I don't, I don't think he was a drummer at all, actually. Um, a lot of xylophone has come to xylophone from drums. Norvo, I don't uh, hear sort of percussive figures as much as he's playing like a horn player, very melodic things. So let's get into talking about. Um, the actual music he plays here um, without doing like a heavy jazz, jazz, metaz, uh, harmonic analysis of it, because I don't, I can't do that. Um, there'll be some need 
because the chords are moving uh, at a pretty quick pace to adjust to that. But he does a great job of kind of uh, utilizing the scale, which is, uh, I've heard some people talk, call it a swing scale. This scale. Um, which has uh, a root, a second, a passing note, <laughs> the third, then there's no fourth, fifth, sixth, root. Um, so, um, we have that, I, I don't want to call it a sharp ninth, but it's that minor third passing note. And we tend to hear it, uh, the third, approached by that note. So it's more like a lower neighbor. Um, it's used to be resolved by the third, in my analysis. Uh, so there it is, the opening phrase, which is a, we can call that a motif, a motive. <laughs> da, da, dum, dum, da, one, two, three, four, those four notes. I'll post a uh, JPEG here and highlight every time those four notes pop up. But I'm gonna, uh, we'll just blow this through this as quickly as I can and painlessly, because it's a YouTube, you're supposed to do like 15 second cat videos. <clears throat> Look, I'm already losing my voice. Right, um, mo motive, five, six, one, five, six, one, nine, yeah, I'm in B flat, which is not, it, it goes, so, five, one, flat seven, five, though that's actually what's going on in the, in the harmony, but just let's think of it as a melody, because I think the key to Red Norwood playing is melody, um, not doing a whole lot of super slick chordal things here, in this, uh, but uh, sort of blowing over um, changes with a strong sense of melody and melodic contour, like a conversation. He says, hey, did you know that I just picked up some green peppers? Yes, I picked up green peppers and I'm going to make something with them, stuffed green, stuffed peppers because the antecedent consequent kind of thing, like question answer. Um, well, when we get to the bridge, it's very clear what he's doing there. So I'm jumping ahead, but um, but that's melodically you can do that over any harmony. It'll it'll work. What do I mean by that? Um, if part of the music makes sense and the other part is lesser related to it, if the strong if the argument is strong enough in this in this part of the melody or in the rhythm or in the harmony, you're gonna be fine. Right, we're gonna have one sort of pulling away uh, situation. Anyway, this, he doesn't play anything remarkably dissonant here, but later on some recordings you can hear some things where the melody is so strong but it doesn't have anything to do with the harmony. Um, um, so that whole phrase is just made up of that scale. Until we get to, and there's a little chromatic thing, which makes sense because we're on the five chord, we're going to clash with our one chord. That's always how uh, tension and resolution works. So at the end of phrases, we're going to have some problem with our scale, always. This is to say that when people learn blues scale and start playing like a, all these bluesy licks over actual blues progression, it never works because the chords and the progression change and will clash with the scale eventually. But it works most of the time. So, works, 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 doesn't work, <laughs> works, work. And what is this? This is sort of that uh, Norvo left hand. <laughs> Almost ghosted. I don't have the finale chops to do it, but you put them in parentheses. Um, not, not an even square regga time thing but and i think that's maybe something like we would call a wrong note <laughs> because this delays our figure right remember um so eventually we hear that c going to the b flat three times uh in a 
finally resolves there when we start our pentatonic rise. What a pentatonic is the is that scale. One, two, three, five, six, one, six, five, three, two, one. With that, add that passing, and we have a pentatonic plus passing note, and we get our um, swingy scale. <laughs> um, and what does he do? Again, a descent where that tension resolves into our B flat, third and fifth. This is typical. Um, who played this figure? Is this Teddy Wilson or uh, James P. Johnson or some stridey pianist? Plays this right hand thing. And here Norbo is doing the xylophone version of it. And getting out of that, we get another version, um, a very, uh, Mel Jackson would do that, kind of. We got a xylophone, it doesn't sing, so the closest to, oh yeah, like this uh, vocal expression we can do is that kind of ornamentation. That's one of the great questions we can ask the different historic xylophone players. What do you do? to make the instrument sing, and that's one of the answers. Norvo had a um, unique approach to playing trills, either close together or um, or quickly alternating between larger intervals. You can hear all, all over his playing. Um, so, uh, what do I have here? Right. Same mo same same thing again. That's the one, two, three, fourth time we're hearing that. Ooh, ah. uh, then we're at the bridge. <laughs> uh, bum, 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 bum. Um, totally smooth scalar playing on a mixolydian flat seven situation where we have these resolving um, sorry what is that that's um, in the key of B flat the third D7 going to the sixth D resolving to G resolving to C resolving to F7 which takes us back to our B flat so that's just typical uh, circle of fifth resolution um, and playing scales. This is what I'm talking about with the antecedent consequence situation. Bum, bum, bum. Right, you hear that conversational uh, bum, bum. It's just up, up and down the instrument, but it's so smooth and so hip. Bum, bum. What? <laughs> um, um, this um, and rhythmically we'll talk about the rhythm in a second rhythmically that also the rhythm makes a lot of sense along with the the movement of the scales there how smooth it is uh, then finally we come back to our A mm, dum, dum. again Every great solo ends with somebody wailing on one note, like making a rock star face. Um, that, you know, you can see that's pretty um, universal <laughs> in the climax of any solo. But it's kind of amazing that Red Norvo here, in the in the context of the soft swinging playing. Bum, bum, mm, 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 just harps on this G, which as a note selection in the key of B flat works. Uh, the sixth on our B flat, um, the root of our sixth, the fifth of our second chord, two chord, and then it, um, it could be the ninth on the dominant, but 
and it goes to the third uh, um, on the dominant, I think, maybe I'm screwing up here, but um, the bass, you listen to the bass on the record, goes the other way. So we have a contrary motion thing happening, pretty brilliant. Um, and but we ended up there, I can say more things, but yeah, the rhythm is really interesting that uh, there's kind of a uh, alternation between putting emphasis on the downbeat and propelling through the measure, um, being the beginning. It doesn't have a strong downbeat. And again, so this is on the back part of the beat. So all this, it's kind of pushing the music forward all the time. And then we have the downbeat. That's not, but, um, but rather pushing the music forward again and alternating with on the beat. And then we get on the beat. And now it's like, this is like a big deal to actually turn the beat around. One, two, three, four, 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 four. To leave that gap changes our perception of the rhythm. And once again, uh, making it lively and, and bopping around. Boom, bop, bop. About one, two, going with that three, four, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, 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 four. And finally leaving this on a sort of stable Stable but unstable. It sounds more like a G minor than a B flat six because the where the strong beats are. So something to look to think about if you want. <laughs> something I'm thinking about is where uh, the repetitious strong notes, where he's kind of riding with his right hand is um, or whatever hand is pushing the music and shaping phrases on downbeats or particularly whether we're coming to the one or kind of pushing through three and four um and there's not ba -doo -ba -doo -ba -doo -ba -doo -ba -doo. there's not this like swingling thing that i think people again have a uh idea that's happening in the thanks